this video comes to us from Christopher Rufo on X, and it says, uh, exclusive in January 2021. January 2021, I believe that is that insurrection day. Yeah, that's insurrection. Yeah, day. yeah, yeah, I yeah. So. I think so. <clears throat> then Disney uh, chairman Bob Iger told employees he was committing the company to, quote, taking a stand on the politics because of J6, then praised himself for making Black Panther, which he said was an example of diversity inclusion. Look, I made Black Panther. Please give me money. So let's see what he has to say. Uh, all right. Well, I, I mean, Bob, and Bob has talked about this uh, eloquently um, since he's become CEO. I'll, I'll say a couple of things about it. You know, we've tended to uh, uh, shy away from politics. Uh, and in doing so, I think we've shied away from talking about issues that aren't political at all, like the issues that we're talking about today. Um, because we believe in doing so, maybe it, looked like, it looks like we're taking a stand. Well, in that reality, we should be taking a stand. I take, by the way, I, I take responsibility for this. I was CEO for 15 years. And so I, you know, I, I, I manage the, the company's public facing um, processes and, and um, you know, how we were portraying ourselves. And I think that we have to be less cautious, as Bob, I think, was just alluding to, about such things and not be concerned, like just commenting about what happened in Washington last week. That's not political on our part at all. We, we know that what we saw was fundamentally wrong and that it was rooted in hatred and oh disrespect and contempt and intolerance. And we should feel oh, I think that's as it. a company to comment about that without Is that the end of the... No, no there's still more. Say that I've learned oh, it's... Um, these last... I mean, it froze on months is it you know, froze I'm, I'm for proud of a lot of the work we've done in oh, terms of diversity over. inclusion okay. on screen yeah yeah when, okay. we, when we did a, a coco for instance at pixar a great example of that or tiana or of course black panther is one of the great examples of that i i, I allowed those things to make me feel a bit complacent in a sense <laughs> <laughs> Uh, man, this fucking virtue signaling piece of shit, man. Yeah, exactly. Holy crap. This guy's uh, snake, man. Not that I, I wanted to be that way, but I thought, wow, we did Black Panther. How great are we? And it caused me to not focus. He, I like how we did Black Panther. I allowed it to happen. We made, I, actually, I made Black Panther myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not racist. I made Black Panther. I allowed it to happen. Oh my God, dude. Jesus. Yeah. It's like, I'm not racist. I have black friends. <laughs> Focus as much as I should have on the culture of the company and the environment and, and, and in the voices oh. that were telling those stories as opposed to just how they were being portrayed on the screen. Oh, oh my God, this guy! Oh yeah, you're you're absolutely the reason why the company is where it is right now, Bob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no one's refuting that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, your your DEI matrix on hiring employees. Yeah, we know we know that's on you. We know that's on you. It's it's, oh, it's one God. of those people who are like, like it's sort of like um. You know what? We're not going to say anything about this political stuff. We're not going to say anything. We just we'll focus on making movies. We we'll focus on making good movies. And entertaining movies and movies that will help, you know, you know, people and stuff like that or whatever. But I guarantee you he was he. I think in the beginning, that was that's what they, they wanted to do. Make good movies, entertaining movies. And that's it. But what ended up happening after that is uh, I guarantee people there will be people who are working for you who are extremely woke who will be like, what are we going to say about this to happen? What are we going to say about the shooting? What are we going to say about uh, Black Lives Matter? What are we going to say about Juneteenth? What are we going to say about uh, Columbus Day and now it should be called Indigenous Persons Day? What are we going to say about J6? We're not saying anything. That means that we're not helping. We're supposed to be helping the future and shit like that. So a lot of the higher ups and the managers feel pressured to talk about it, to go onto the social media and put a black circle, put a rainbow flag put a fucking pride flag or whatever it is, an Antifa flag or whatever it is these companies want to do. They are pressured to doing it. And it sort of becomes second nature. 
moving forward. It's like it's like oh, it's you know, uh, you know, Black History Month. You got to put the the Kente flag on our uh, Twitter uh, Twitter file, right? Our Twitter profile or some shit. And then we have um, oh fucking uh, uh, June is here. We got to put uh the freaking uh the you know pride flag on our uh, profile it's like it's like dude like who make good movies man stop getting into politics it's like oh uh, i don't think j6 is political I'm like absolutely is political it is yeah and yeah he, he also flexed about oh it's my 15 years at ceo the thing is in your first half first half a ceo that was still disney in its highs like everything was set up for you you had the right people it right um the right people, the right executives are properly managing Disney. But when, um, because you are so complacent that everything was given to you, you didn't realize that the woke seeping in. You didn't realize that the, that DEI employment process was going to absolutely eviscerate your company. And now look what, where it is. So you can't really, I, I don't, yeah, like I said before, buying Pixar is not something, it's not an achievement. And now it's looking to buy a gate. It's now looking to, get into video games again just through sheer buying without really knowing the gaming industry without really having the proper know-how it's just here's a bucket of money epic make a video game then he's gonna think oh we made the best video game of all time assuming it's good but i i I honestly think it won't uh but yeah this is the person that's this is the ceo man he put all the board of directors just the entire board is just full of yes men to him if I'm not mistaken, they're all they're all tied up to him somehow. That he's the reason why they are in the board seat. So of course they're gonna always side with him. Of of course they're gonna shoot down Elon Musk. Of course they're gonna shoot down Nelson Peltz because Bob is responsible for putting them in the board seat, and they get a shit ton of money for that. So yeah, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, this guy's a huge snake that needs to be taken out. It's like yeah, I mean, this guy's got enough money to live the rest of his life in peace. Like it's just pure ego at this point. Like. He doesn't want to be perceived negatively when he exits Disney. That's all there is to it. I'm willing to bet, like, if, if he, looking back, I'm pretty sure he's like, he wouldn't want to, if he knew that this was coming, I don't think he would have ousted um, Chapek. I would have, I would think he would let Chapek just take the fall. Like, he kind of, ah, oh, I shouldn't have played the political, political, political game and oust Chapek. I should have just let yep. Chapek do all the trouble because he thought that just by simply him coming back, things would course correct itself, which he was wrong, obviously. Like because like the woke is so deep, so deep into the system, it it's not gonna work that way. But yeah, <laughs> I, 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 at least I the hap, the good thing is yeah, we're all here to see his incompetence, and now he's trying to save face. And I'm glad didn't that Elon they lose? Thing. Didn't they lose the Disney Florida thing? Yeah, and they continue to do so. I, I wish we had Andrew on, but yeah. Uh, and he's all, yeah. And here comes Gina, Elon, and the other stuff. <laughs> well, when yeah. we come, the Gina segment already has some shill defenders. Nah, this is a, this is a, this is a pretense case. Uh, it's not real. It's like, <laughs> I, I just find it funny. Yeah. So, so this is from NPR right over here. It says the federal judge dismisses Disney's lawsuit against Florida governor on the sentence. Yeah, get fucked. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's like, like you guys has you, you guys been having your own taxes, your own fucking shit, like ungoverned by the uh, by by Florida for the longest time, and then now you came out and says, "Oh, we're gonna fucking you know, f- you know ruin Ron DeSantis." Like, good luck, man. He's the fucking governor, and excuse me, they're gonna fucking tax the shit out of you. But the thing is that now, now here's the thing. Uh, here's another one right over here. In new video, Disney CEO Bob Iger addresses shareholders saying their vote is important to Disney's future. He also said the major distractions we're facing from activist investors are exactly what we don't need. <laughs> Let's watch this video. Okay. It's two minutes okay. long. This, okay, this one I didn't see. This one I didn't see. Right, here we go. I only saw the first one. Okay. I'm Bob Iger, CEO of the Walt Disney Company. Ahead of our upcoming annual meeting, I wanted to update you about the company's significant recent achievements and share why your vote this year is so important to Disney's future. Achievements, my ass, man. It's been a busy and challenging (laughs) time since I returned to the company, but we've made significant progress and I'm enormously optimistic about our future. 
Over the past year, we've assembled a new team of experienced leaders, and we've created a much more efficient and highly effective company structure. The steps we've taken to propel Disney into a new era of growth are paying off, as evidenced by our recent earnings performance and the new growth initiatives underway to build our businesses. The team and I have a responsibility to ensure that Disney is one of the most admired companies in the world. This is one of our biggest priorities. We also want to return to a place where we're consistently delivering shareholder value. We've already taken steps in that direction by declaring a second higher dividend and by initiating a $3 billion stock buyback program. He wants All of this he takes wants a lot of work back. and a laser yeah. focus on the task at hand, which is why the major distractions we're facing More dividends is insane. are exactly what we don't need. I'm urging you to vote for the Disney board's recommended slate of nominees on the white proxy card. And not to vote for the white card. Oh, that's pretty racist, man. Yeah, man. Where's the diversity okay. in that? Okay, great. I'm going to pause at the spe specific moment and let me know what you see. The nominee is presented by these activists. What oh, do you I, see? I, I, I didn't know it was that brazen. But <laughs> what do you see here? <laughs> Who is X out? The first X out person. Oh, don't vote for Dilson, please. Yeah, Dirty basically. <laughs> okay. I, I, yeah, I didn't know you were. I didn't know it was that brazen. I'm only seeing this for the first time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So basically, yeah. it's like, please don't vote for Nelson Peltz. Please. <laughs> we're trying to buy. See, he's like, dividends buy uh, share, hold, share, share buybacks. Basically, he said, hey, let me buy back the share so he can have more share of the company. So when Nelson Peltz comes in, he's like, ah, suck my dick. But Nelson <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but the fact is, it's white card. <laughs> 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 oh shit, man! Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah, and he's giving out more dividends when they really shouldn't at a time where they're losing hundreds of millions per quarter. It's, I I don't know. It's like yeah, it's like it all. I also blame the investors at Wall Street. It's like, are you guys really this dumb to continue allowing this to happen? Do you? I, I get it. You you have a lot of holdings to a lot of companies, but this is one of your major holdings, man. You you gotta pay more attention to what's happening. It's like it's for me. It, it just keeps telling me people at Wall Street are just people with too much money. They they claim to be smart in this kinds of things, but I really don't see it. Yeah. So he basically he was he's so scared about Nelson Peltz and a, a bunch of these other people who are who might take over the company. He's like, please, I'm putting my white card on the line. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't vote for him. Yeah. See, if he wanted to vote, he would. It would have been called the black card. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh shit, man. Yeah. He's he's showing his right privilege right now. Yeah. Did you know that I actually met him before? Oh, you did. Back, back I, I imagine he's not yet the CEO, or he was already the CEO. He was. He was transitioning to become the new CEO, and I met him at the park. Mm. Uh, like what, one of my friends, like. He was like, this is Bob Iger. I'm like, who the fuck is that? So he's the new CEO. I was like, oh, hey, nice to meet you. Motherfucker is short. <laughs> <laughs> he's like up to <laughs> he's a short <laughs> dude. But uh, but yeah, it's um yeah, it's like uh imagine I nice. I I I was literally facing, I was staring into the eyes of the devil, and I didn't know it. Yeah, because like, look back in back then, people didn't perceive him the way he is now. Because like Disney was in such a good state, it's just that this man because he just snaked his way in. He doesn't. He didn't actually for me. He didn't work his way act to be a CEO. He, he doesn't know what made what made Disney great, the products. So he he didn't have the foresight to see the woke people come in. He's like, oh okay okay yeah yeah DEI higher diversity and not meritocracy, not through merit. Sure. Sure, sure, it'll work out, and this is what this is what happened. This is the Disney we have today. So, yeah, uh, pretty sad. He, but, yeah, it's like he, I, he, he took it for granted. He 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 mm -hmm. took his he took his position for granted. He does not know what like yeah like, like you said he did not know what made Disney such a revered such a 
big household name. I remember when I took my traditions, which is sort of the thing, that's what they call it when you get onboarded. When you take your traditions, they show you this video about what made Disney great. And they said that as of right now, Mickey, if you show anyone Mickey Mouse's silhouette, he is one of the most popular characters in the world. And that was back in 2008. And I believe is he is still not the popular, but the most recognizable characters in silhouette form. And the thing is that Mickey Mouse is more popular and more recognizable than Santa Claus. Right? So that's how big Disney has gotten now. And this is before they bought Lucas and this is before they bought Marvel. So like the way it is now, and he basically took all of his, his, his fucking, um, his, his position for granted and buying a bunch of these things. Yes. You bought a lot of good companies, but you basically hired shitty people that hired even more shitty people to yeah, run your companies. All, yeah, now they're all run to the. Now he's looking to. I wouldn't be surprised if he, if he buys a game company here here and there just so to test the waters. Given there are a lot of game companies that are struggling, but yeah, even if he buys, he manages to buy a good one. He'll given his management style, he'll run it to the ground. Uh, like at, at this point, people probably have more respect to Bobby Kotick. The former CEO of Activision Blizzard. Yeah, he, he's a scumbag. Don't get me wrong. And, but the <laughs> thing is, the thing is, that guy made a lot of money for Activision Blizzard. He made Call of Duty shoot become the most well-known gaming franchise in the world. He made uh, yep. World of Warcraft. He, he's, he made he made the shareholders a lot, a lot of money. So even be given that the crap crap person that he is, he still he still actually made the company money before he left the before he left recently. This guy, this guy is completely fake. He's, he's he like he was just at the right place at the right time. Like if you if you put a janitor as a CEO, Disney would have still went on running for a couple of years. But <laughs> uh yeah then so now that the uh because of his negligence or his inept capability to actually have that foresight on how to actually run the company. Now it's going downhill. Now people see for what he really is. Yep. Let's continue what he says to talk about the white card. <laughs> it was hedge funds. You have the power to make sure we are able to continue our momentum from the past year and ensure the success of the Walt Disney Company as the world's leading and most beloved entertainment company. The leadership team at our company is experienced and highly motivated. We're proud of what we've accomplished. We have a clear vision for the future and we're optimistic about it. Our goals are to improve the quality of the films we produce, to transition ESPN into a preeminent digital sports platform, to turn streaming into a significant growth business with increased reach and strong margins, and to turbocharge growth in our experiences business. All of these goals are achievable. And we've already made meaningful progress with each of them. The opportunities before us are very exciting. Epic games. And we know that we have the strategy, the talent, the resources, and the determination to be successful. Thank you for your continued support. And I urge you to vote on the white proxy card <laughs> in support of Disney director nominees. Vote white! <laughs> 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 oh man uh, oh man uh so uh yeah grace this is your first time watching this video how do you feel about this uh vote white yeah. to save disney <laughs> yeah, I, I i i don't know this, this i i kept i keep calling him out for the longest time ever since we started it's like now this kind of just like he's not even trying to hide it anymore like, oh, we're so profitable, guys. Look at our stellar performance. Dude, shut up, man. We, we don't even losing money. You've been losing billions upon billions annually. What, what's what's the key perf what performance are you talking about? It's like you're throwing bullshit right in front of us already. The, the sad part is the Wall Street people probably will. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. It's <laughs> I don't know. It's like the, the thing with Epic, like Tim Sweeney is not exactly the he's not exactly. He doesn't have exactly the moral high ground either, and mm -hmm. um, especially with what how he dealt the Apple situation, like it's it's really I mean, let's be real, it's really Epic who started that situation with Apple, where um, 
they took down Fortnite from the Apple App Store because they um they didn't want to comply with Apple's 70-30 split, but which is actually the standard for everyone else, for Sony, for Microsoft, and yet they threw a beef with Apple. I and now that the Epic Game Store is not performing that well, and they lost, I believe the Epic lost already, right? The case against Apple. So I mean, no shit, they're gonna take 1.5 billion from Disney, even though it's gonna end up being crap in the end. Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, I, I'm glad this is. I mean, I I hope the the um the votation is people are smart enough smart enough to see what's happening. The major shareholders who have a, who have big stakes on Disney know what's happening. Thanks for checking out this segment of the Project Egg Row podcast. If you like what we do here, please like, share, subscribe. Hit the notification bell and you will know next time when we go live. We do go live every Saturday at 8 p.m. Once again, we are just getting started. Tons of more video to come. Thanks, and we'll see you guys next time.